Hi, in a previous video linked up here and down below if you haven't seen it, I repaired an Arlec uh, space heater and I did a Dave CAD drawing of basically what was uh, happening here for the power supply and well, I won't spoil it for you what the failure was, just go and look at it. So all I showed on my Dave CAD drawing was a 47 ohm resistor here, a bridge rectifier and uh, then the uh, AC capacitor down here uh, with some bleeder resistors across there and it basically uh, generated the 24 volts output from the bridge rectifier, 24 volts uh, to power the relay and the uh, LED display control uh, circuitry and stuff for the uh, heater. And somebody asked me, well, how do you actually get 24 volts out of the bridge rectifier? They didn't quite understand. And that's because, yeah, I forgot to include the actual regulation side. So we're actually going to look at uh, a, a capacitive drop-in mains Zena rectifier. Let's check it out. Now this won't be an in-depth tutorial on Zener diodes because I've already done that, linked up here as well as down below. Check that out if you want to work out the intricacies of uh, powering stuff with Zener diodes. Zener diodes use a current through them like this to actually uh, regulate the voltage across them and when you include the load the calculations can get a little bit tricky for Zener diodes. So we won't cover that detail here, it's in my previous tutorial video which is quite extensive on the Zener diode topic. But basically Basically, um, as you saw on the PCB, here's a photo of the PCB. The Zener diodes are actually on the top side, they're through hole uh, parts, but I've just photoshopped them onto the uh, back side of the board so you can see what's happening. And you might think that they look like back to back Zeners, but if you actually trace out the circuit, which I've done here, not extensively, it's not a full reverse engineering, but we can actually see what's going on here. Because uh, just the bridge rectifier on its own is not enough to regulate the voltage. You do actually need a regulation element. All the diode bridge rectifier is doing is current steering uh, where the current needs to go. Because I forgot to put it here, you've got 240 volts AC in. We use 240 volts here in Australia. And the bridge rectifier, um, you've seen, you're used to this uh, configuration of the bridge rectifier, but it's exactly uh, the same as this. So let's assume that uh, the AC waveforms on the positive part of the cycle here, then we're going to get the diode steering it like that, and we're going to get another diode steering it like that. So then we can get current to flow in our circuit. But when this flips around negative to positive like that, then we're going to get a diode like that and get rid of that one. And then that's going to jump over there like that and we get rid of that one, and now the current can flow from positive through negative like that. And each alternating uh, cycle of the 50 hertz uh, AC waveform, then it just gets the current always going in this direction like this. It never goes backwards. And that's the job of the bridge rectifier, but if you've got nothing here, then there's no load. It actually won't do anything. Um, it, you'll get no current flowing at all, really, apart from uh, parasitic capacitances. Unfortunately, I don't have the PCB with me anymore, so I can't actually measure it, but we were, we're actually getting that 24 volts clamped over there. And we saw that uh, our input capacitor here, it was an X2 uh, class capacitor, normally 220 nanofarads, but it had actually dropped in value to 100 nanofarads, and this happens to uh, AC capacitors like this when you get surges on them, the self-healing dielectric inside actually uh, plasma vaporizes tiny little holes and over every time you get a surge, the dielectric self heals. It doesn't uh, short out, usually uh, that's its job. It heals itself by burning the little metal, metalized plastic inside the uh, poly put the kettle on capacitor. When I say poly put the kettle on, it can be polypropylene, polycarbonate, there's various different types of poly material uh, used in capacitors and uh, it's, it's metalized on top, metal layers. Then when you get a surge on there, it sort of like punches through a tiny little hole. We're only talking micro on uh, size stuff here and then a little plasma arc forms and it just vaporizes the metal in there and then just it forms an insulator again so you've just got that hole uh, with the insulator here's a little graphic um, kind of showing what happens there and this is why you generally use a self-healing capacitor in a circuit like this but one of their problems is that over time they can lose capacitance due to uh, you know main surges and stuff like that actually uh, causing uh, loss of capacitance due to all these little holes opening up on your capacitor. You've only got so much area on your capacitive uh, plate. Sooner or later, 
it's going to drop in value. So we saw a pretty drastic one here, you know, 220 down to 100 nanofarad. But that 100 nanofarads then caused our regulator to drop out of regulation and we weren't getting 24 volts across here. I think we we're getting like 12 and a half, 13 volts. We're getting roughly half the voltage out of our Zener diode. So why does that happen? Well, the effective uh, resistance of this uh, 220 nanofarad capacitor, it actually goes up in value. And the standard capacitive reactive formula XC is one on two pi FC. F is the frequency, 50 hertz here in Australia. Um, C is the uh, capacitance. So if your capacitance value drops, then your resistance goes up. So that's called the capacitive reactance. Sometimes uh, you'll hear people call it impedance and they kind of use interchangeably, but capacitive reactance is actually just the value of the capacitor itself. Impedance also means the capacitive reactance value itself just due to the capacitance plus the internal uh, equivalent series resistance in there. So like the total resistance, that's what's called impedance, but they're kind of used like interchangeably. Impedance or reactance. Eh. But strictly speaking, they are different terms. So this impedance is what's known as the AC resistance of the capacitor. And this is basic AC circuit theory. The effective resistance of a capacitor is going to change with frequency. But because we've got a fixed frequency, 50 hertz, uh, 240 volt mains here, then um, we're always going to get about 14.5K effective AC resistance of the capacitor. So basically that is our dropper resistor for our Zener diode here because the Zener diode always needs a dropper resistor in here. But uh -huh, what is this 47 ohm resistor up here? Well it's actually because it's very low, it's like 47 ohms compared to 14.5k ohms, it's not the dropper resistor for the Zener here. It's actually inrush uh, protection because when you first plug the appliance into the mains, if you've got a capacitor uh, directly across it, which you effectively do with a capacitor and just assuming your load is like a very low value, then the capacitor appears as a short circuit. So you want to actually have some inrush protection. So that limits the surge current when you first turn it on. And in this particular case, it might, I've actually drawn it with a, a fuse symbol in there because I don't know for certain, but it might be a fusible resistor. And that's quite common in this uh, sort of application. So if your capacitor does fail uh, short circuit, then your resistor is going to pop. So this is how you can actually get a power supply directly from the mains. It's a mains driven Zener diode voltage regulator. But the huge disadvantage of this is that everything in this circuit here is at mains potential, okay? It's not isolated. There's no isolation transformer, even though your circuit might be 24 volts or 3.3 volts to, uh, to power your circuitry. You don't want to go around touching and probing in your circuit, especially with your oscilloscope. Done the whole video, how not to blow up your oscilloscope. You don't want to be connecting your scope ground on here or anything like that. You don't want to be touching it with your wet finger because um, you really come a gutter. It's at some sort of mains potential, no touchy. But this sort of uh, Zener regulation circuit directly from the mains is cheap and simple. And that's why it's used in tons, you know, you'll find them in uh, light bulbs and all sorts of appliances uh, like this because you don't need an isolation transformer and all that sort of stuff. That costs a huge amount extra. Real cheap ass designs even do away with the inrush protection. And uh, you might have like a mob across here as well for like um, extra surge protection and stuff like that. This particular one didn't. So what you've got here is a basic AC resistor here of 14.5K, stays constant with uh, the 50 hertz frequency, and a Zener diode here, and then you can have your resistor load on there. And uh, we can actually work out roughly uh, how much current uh, we're going to get total, uh, including the Zener current and the load current, because you have to separate them. That's in my Zener uh, tutorial. And it's roughly uh, 240 volt uh, RMS here, divided by 14.5K. But I know what you're saying, Dave, we also have to subtract uh, the Zener voltage here. Well, in engineering, when you're doing ballpark calculations like this, and that's all we're doing in this video is ballpark uh, calculations, because 24 volts is like an order of magnitude less than 240 volts. If something's like an order of magnitude, um, different to what you're talking about. Like if you have a resistor that's an order of magnitude higher in parallel with another resistor, you just like ignore it. And that's what we're going to ignore here. Just ignore the Zener uh, voltage. So 240 volts divided by 14.5K, uh, around about 
16 milliamps or so through the resistor here and through the Zener and or load. But because this load actually is a relay coil and here's the data sheet uh, for it and you'll see that at a 24 volt relay is actually a 15 milliamp coil current. So oh, we, <laughs> there's not much current left over to actually drive the Zener here. So uh, it's kind of right on the border. And this is why um, uh, the, uh, when our 220 nanofarad capacitor uh, dropped in capacitance value and the resistance went up, there just wasn't the current available to maintain regulation in the Zener and the Zener voltage dropped and then we didn't have enough, uh, spoiler alert, didn't have enough voltage uh, to turn on the uh, relay coil. We just didn't have the 24 volts and uh, the actual coil current available because this value here went up in value um, as the capacitance dropped due to the one over uh, formula here. So yeah, and that just starved the relay of current and it couldn't switch on. So the simplest AC regulated uh, supply that you can get is just basically a capacitor or a resistor, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, in series with a diode bridge and a, a, and a Zener diode. And that's it, Bob's your uncle. You've got a regulated um, whatever, 24 volts, 3.3, 5 volts, whatever it is uh, to power your circuit. But as I said, it's a little bit dangerous, it's not isolated, no touchy, but if you use it inside an enclosed product where uh, the customer can't actually touch it, then meh, it's good enough. So why do they actually use a capacitor? It's got nothing to do with uh, AC coupling or anything. You could actually simply use a resistor in here. No worries whatsoever. You could put in a 14.5K resistor instead of a cap. In fact, it's probably cheaper. Why don't they do that? Well, look at the calculations here, okay? So let's calculate the power if we used an actual resistor up here, power dissipated in that resistor. Um, so we'll call that PR and it's I squared R is the uh, power uh, formula. So it's 16 milliamps squared because 240 volts divided by 14 and a half K, 16 milliamps squared times 14 and a half K, it's 3.7 watts. Now that's actually a fairly beefy resistor. That's a, a lot of, and it's a lot of power uh, to waste away as well. If you're doing a, a low power circuit or something like that, if you're driving you know, some lead light or something like that, you, you don't wanna be pissing away 3.7 watts in the resistor. So instead you use a capacitor because there's no power loss ideally in an ideal capacitor, there's no power loss at all. The dissipation, even though it's equivalent resistance is 14.5K, the power loss in this capacitor is effectively zero, or there'll be a tiny amount due to the equivalent series resistance in here, but that's really, really, really small. Now, of course, to understand this, you have to get into power factor, and there's no free lunch here, okay? You still have to provide at the generator, at the power station somewhere, still has to provide the 3.7 watts. But because this is a mostly capacitive circuit, the power factor is gonna be absolutely horrible. So even though the power generator has to deliver the power, the actual uh, load here does not dissipate any power because it's a capacitor. So that's why they whack a capacitor in there. So, um, you know, if especially if it's a little compact device or something, you know, you don't want to be wasting, we're only talking like 16 milliamps here. It's not much current. You don't want to be wasting 3.7 watts to deliver your 15 milliamps. So, but it kind of like puts the problem back onto the grid, but the grid kind of, uh, you know, sort of, they try and balance it out with power factor correction and all the rest of it. And we won't go into that. I've probably done a video on that. If I have, I'll link it in. So this circuit's a bit unusual. I kind of uh, expected at first glance um, that they would just uh, use, you know, have the 24 volt rail and Bob's your uncle, maybe a secondary regulator in there uh, to power the 3.3 or five volt uh, digital logic. There's a little micro with a uh, display and stuff like that. But they've actually gone for this configuration here. I haven't drawn the micro in, but basically what it is, they've, they've got a Zener diode up here and a smaller one down here. So this is uh, the high voltage one and this capacitor is a 50 volt volt one and this is a uh, lower voltage jobby down here and I believe this lower uh, Zener down here will be like 3.3 or 5 volts whatever is uh, re required for the uh, digital logic uh, circuitry and here's the uh, relay coil here and the PMP driver transistor up here they've got a back EMF uh, diode across that as well so that's across the top Zener but then they're actually uh, rather than then 
taking that 24 volts and then dropping it down again. They're actually using the return path here uh, for the coil to go through this zener here. So basically uh, the current's going through both and the load is being switched uh, out of this one and then into this one down here. So calculating the power of these two zeners gets a bit complicated depending on whether the relay's on or off. Because as I said, the, the relay is like a relay is nominally like 15 milliamps plus uh, the lead, whatever the lead circuit and your uh, microcontroller takes, you know, another couple of milliamps there at least, you know, five milliamps or something uh, there at, at least. So, you know, it really doesn't uh, leave um, anything over for your Zener regulation. So, uh, this at ballpark calculations seems to be a bit dodgy design, and that's why it was uh, not tolerant to this value actually uh, dropping in capacitance when uh, surges cause that uh, capacitor to self-heal and lose capacitance. And as I showed in my Zena uh, tutorial video, um, choosing the power rating of your Zena diode here, you have to take into account your minimum and maximum uh, loads. In this particular case, uh, depending on whether the heat is on or off, it's going to be like 15 milliamps or whatever difference in the relay current. They might even be running it at a lower voltage. You know, you don't need exactly 24 volts to operate that relay. It's going to have a minimum latching voltage, minimum latching uh, current. You'd have to look at the data um, sheet for that uh, kind of thing. So I think, I think because there's hardly any margin in here at all uh, for the extra current. So I think that they, this top one's not actually 24, it could be you know 20 or something uh, like that because we measured 24 total across here. So then they've got this um, NPN down here and this is actually powered, this is what's powered from the micro. So the micro is powered from like the 3.3 or 5 volts here and that switches on this uh, NPN transistor which then turns on the PNP. Then you've got a small base current across uh, both these zeners here and then it switches on uh, the relay which then turns on the uh, heater coil here. And we almost forgot about the uh, bleeder resistors across the 220 nanofarad capacitor here. This is for uh, safety. So when you pull uh, the thing out, this capacitor uh, it could be charged up. You pull it out of the outlet and you don't want to touch the pins because then you could get a zappy. So uh, you've got two high value resistors, 750K each. And uh, so 1.5 meg uh, total across the 220 and that just bleeds the charge off uh, that capacitor. So then the user, um, if they accidentally touch uh, the mains pins, they're not going to get a zap from it. And the reason that they use two resistors uh, in series physically here on the board, you can actually uh, see the two there, is that uh, the SMD resistors that they're using, they're only rated for about 200 uh, volts each. So they have to put two in series to get the voltage rating required. So there you go. I hope you found that uh, quick follow-up interesting. As I said, uh, this is just ballpark stuff. More detail uh, calculations. I actually have to physically get the board back and do measurements. And, you know, you could go into more detailed stuff. But uh, please watch that Zener tutorial if you want to know all about uh, using Zener diode circuits for regulation. But that's what they're uh, doing here. It's basically a capacitive. It's, this is not what's called a capacitive divider power supply, which is basically uh, two capacitors, um, two or more capacitors in circuit, and then using that uh, AC resistance to actually tap off a smaller voltage than the 240 volt you're feeding in. Um, there basically, this is just a uh, Zener circuit here, which as I said, you could use a resistor here, or you could use a capacitor. They use a capacitor because they want to um, get the power dissipation down and then um, <laughs> foist the problem off onto the power generator. So if you found that video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, discuss down below and check me out on my alternative platforms, Odyssey and Utreon as well. I've got like 65,000 uh, subscribers over on Odyssey, as well as some exclusive content over there as well. Catch you next time.